Easter. We have a happy problem this morning and we ran out of bulletins, so if you could share with your neighbor when it comes time. There's also um, hymns in the back of your pews that uh, if you find out what hymn number is from your neighbor, you can sing along with that. We are glad that you are here. If you are visiting with us, we invite you to sign the guest book in our atrium to let us know that you're here. And if you're with us online, you can leave a comment in the comment section. We're glad you made your way to us either in person or online. Today is also the last day that our friends Elmer and Marianne will be with us. They're moving downstate to be closer to family, and today we are going to honor their membership among us with some special prayers. So please join us after the service for a special coffee hour in their honor. And this kind of gets me a little bit. Uh, it's also my and Christian's last Sunday celebrating as your co-rectors together. Um, we'll still be here for three more weeks, but we'll be in different places. So this is our last Sunday together at the altar, um, maybe forever. <laughs> so that's a big thing. Um, but that also means that we're in our final stretch of our pastoral time with you um, and it means that we're also busy gathering in safe ways to say goodbye to one another. So we hope that you can join us for the last two gatherings being planned. One is a night of baseball at the Pit Spitters on June 4th, and the other is a night in the Labrador Room at Lucky Dogs on June 8th. Announcements for that are in the e blast. Okay, I think that's it from me and from my co-rector. Um, I invite you now to join me in taking a few deep breaths to arrive from all the places we've been since we were last together and center our hearts and minds in the presence of Christ. Again, welcome.
all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. silence. 
And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We will now read Psalm 148 responsibly by whole verse. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all the angels of His. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, heaven heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fog, and tempestuous wind blowing in the soil. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild beasts and all cattle, greedy things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people, and grace for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are under him. Hallelujah. Our second reading is a reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
is willing to shake things up a bit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I spent a few days this past week in New Orleans. You see, I received a discernment grant from the broader church to help assess what might be next for the ministry that I helped start called the Order of Necratius. The Order of Necratius is a community and network of hunters and anglers who gather to help feed their neighbors God-grown protein. But the grant helped pay for some continuing education. Your retreat was to help church planters and church redevelopers as they attempt to plant new churches and create new ministries in the Episcopal Church. It's pretty exciting to think about all of the new ministries being started and all of the new worshiping communities starting. I was able to meet with new church planters and ministry entrepreneurs who care deeply about the Episcopal Church and her mission. I made some new friends and connections, ate some fresh seafood, and saw some live New Orleans jazz. But on top of that, we walked the streets of New Orleans. We walked Bourbon Street, and Canal Street, St. Charles Avenue, and all of the touristy places. But then we walked through the neighborhoods where people actually lived. We went to a library and met Ms. Jackson, who cleaned the library. We met a fellow who was an urban farmer, growing healthy vegetables for all those in the neighborhood who lived in a food desert. I met neighbors who had no housing, trying to make it in a world that is complicated and sometimes cruel. We met with a deacon at an Episcopal church that ministered to boys and girls in a fantastic after-school program. We walked, and we walked, and we walked. Some of us limped. <laughs> I rode cable cars and took Ubers, chatted with the canon of the ordinary from the Diocese of Louisiana, who was just elected to be their next bishop as of yesterday. I had conversation and beverages with former seminary classmates and met with the Reverend Tom Brackett, the missioner for New Church Starts and Missional Initiatives in the Episcopal Church. I met new friends who were starting churches that focused on families who were fostering or adopting children. I met a church planter who was launching a new Filipino community in Houston, Texas. I met many others, all doing new things. So many new and exciting things are happening in our Episcopal Church. And today, today is the last Sunday that Jody and I will be here together. The last time that we'll both be at St. Philip's at the same time for worship. It's the end of something that has been good. The end of six years of mutual ministry in which we met many of you who were here before us. Welcome to many of you that came later and had the very sacred task of presiding at many, many funerals as we sent your friends and loved ones into the near presence of God. We've enjoyed this work, even when it was hard. We felt honored to be your priests, even when we fell short. And together, we all have been faithful ministers of the church that God has called each of us to be a part of. And along with the ending of this pastoral relationship is the beginning of, of another chapter in the life of this parish. You will most likely have an interim priest who will help you navigate the upcoming months as you once again discern who God is calling to this place at this time to work alongside you as you seek to more fully usher in the kingdom of God. There will be a new and fresh energy, new mission, new ministry, new opportunities for all of you. There will be smiles and thoughts and dreams of new ways that St. Phil's can live more fully into her baptismal promises. We will all be a step closer to a new heaven and a new earth. Similarly, in today's gospel, there are stories of leavings, stories of upcoming new life. The scene is the Last Supper, the Monday Thursday story. Judas has just exited their presence to betray them, especially Jesus. 
Remember that these stories were written down many years after the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus. The Gospel of John was written partially to comfort the Johannine community who was struggling with the absence of their friend and leader, Jesus. And the author offers this story today as a small picture to the life of Jesus to console those who, were, who still struggle and wrestle with what Jesus' absence meant. And Jesus, in this pericope, tells his friends what things will be like later on. What things will be like in the future, after Easter. And this is mind-blowing, at least for me. Jesus says that for a long time we were identified by various things. But from now on, people will identify his followers, his disciples, because of their love. In the Acts passage, Peter receives a vision that sets aside the identifying marks of eating certain kinds of meat and being circumcised which I'm sure were both ideas and shifts that were a relief to all present in the room <laughs> and beyond. But to declare that your new marker, the new identifying factor of your movement, of your revolution, is love, is shocking. Peter acknowledges that this new expression of love is now the reigning economic commodity. Peter, who was in the room with Jesus at the Last Supper, who was present when Judas walked out, abandoning this way of being. The same Peter who denied that he even knew Jesus when things got tough. And we throw out the word love a lot, don't we? I love fishing. I love tacos. I love music. I love my family. But Jesus says that the kind of love that the kingdom of God is built on is the love that he has introduced um, that he has introduced them to throughout his life and that he will complete in the upcoming days after the Last Supper. A love that heals. A love that feeds. A love that speaks truth to power. A love that learns from the Syrophoenician woman. A love that places the needs of others above the needs of self. A love that lays down his life for the benefits of others. This is the new commandment from Jesus for all of his disciples, including you and including me. When the church planters and new ministry developers have chosen to live by the new commandment, they've chosen to create communities around adoptive and foster families, Korean Americans, <laughs> trans Hispanics, in a community in the heart of Pittsburgh. These planters have chosen to create more and more love, to pass that along. They have chosen love as their identity. We have ministries here at St. Phil's that create space for you folks to choose love. In the baby pantry, in the good news gardens, by serving in the kitchen, making coffee for the faithful who are present here today by serving on the altar guild, or by being willing to serve in a liturgical role. There are dozens and dozens of other ways. And your vestry has chosen love. The vestry has chosen to follow the words of Jesus by leading this community into the future and beyond. A future bent towards love. As they work to organize and leverage the generous endowment and gifts given to this parish to show all around that we are direct descendants of those same disciples and of that same commandment of love. The Easter ethic that is presented by Jesus in our passage today is our guiding light. Love is the thing that will bring transformation in our lives and in the lives of all those who encounter us. So St. Phil's, love each other, even your enemies, especially Love one another. Love your fellow parishioners and those you encounter today and tomorrow. Then all will know that we are Christians, Episcopalians, by our love. Amen. Amen.
and Mary Ann have made St. Philip's their spiritual home since 2016. In the Episcopal Church, their faith expression since being confirmed and received in 2018. They have braved the unknown of being new to a community and tradition they found familiar yet foreign, and embraced ministries they never imagined they would be invited into. The scriptures are filled with stories of people who have been called to move to new places, Abraham and Sarah, Mary and Joseph, Paul and Barnabas, Priscilla and Aquila. Filled with uncertainty about what lay ahead, these people of God could not have found their moves easy. Yet they were also filled with excitement, trusting that God was calling them and guiding them to a new place. And now you, our beloved friends, are preparing to leave us and go to a new place, a new home, and a new church. As part of this body of Christ over the past years, you have given yourselves in ways that we have appreciated and will miss. Mary Ann, your prayerful leadership on the altar guild and in the making of the bread, served this community in the most quiet and loving ways possible. Your reading of scripture for the gathered community and making of the bread for the Eucharist and setting up the elements for the feast on Sundays, traveling to Grand Rapids to harvest the wheat to make the bread for Eucharist, and your leadership with contemplative prayer ministry have fed the faithful here, and we are grateful. Elmer, your quiet ministry of caretaking of the preparation of our memorial garden plots for burial, leadership on vestry, and willingness to pitch in wherever was needed has been an act of faithfulness. Few have been aware of, but all have benefited from. We ask God's blessing upon you as we lift our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the wide and wonderful world in which we live. We praise you for your constant care for those who have trusted you in ages past, who have journeyed in faith to new lands of promise. We trust now that you will hold Elmer and Marianne securely in your hands as they too follow your call to a new place. May they take with them hearts filled with your love and grace that those with whom they live and work may see in them the face of Jesus Christ. Bless them, that they may be a blessing. Guide them to a new church home, where they may continue to grow in grace, in spirit, and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most holy and life-living God, the friends of Jesus carried your good news, each to a different place according to their gifts and calling. Bless Elmer and Marianne as they carry your word of love, making disciples for your service and building up your church through the power of your spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
pray for those in our diocese preparing for the sacred order of deacons, including Elizabeth, Joy, Trish, Mark, Jim, and Linda. We remember with gratitude the retired clergy of the diocese. For this gathering, our clergy and elected leaders, Christian and Jody, our priests, our vestry and their officers, Mike, Wendy, Joy, Barb, BJ, Harold, Susan, Denise, and Matt, and our delegates and alternates to diocesan convention, Mike, Joy, Wendy, and Nancy. We pray for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask for prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask for prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask for prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of God. In our parish side book prayers, we lift up Suzanne Krauss, Sue Lowry, David and Patricia Leach, the families we serve at the Baby Pantry, and all those who use this space to bring about beauty and healing in your world. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those we name now. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for those in need of healing, especially Blanche, Dorothy, Carol, Joanne, Arlene, Barbara, Susan, Preston, Frank, Mark, Elmer, Dave, Don, Maggie, Tom, Ruth, Chris, Matt, and all those who have asked for our prayers. We give God thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Look with favor we pray on your servant, Retta Barron, as she begins another year. And we thank you for the love and witness of those beginning another year of married life. Today we give thanks for Elmer and Marianne Bissler to pray for God's abundant love to bless them and keep them as they relocate to a new area. Praise God for those of every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. been a while since we've had communion together in the way that we used to, so I just wanted to give you a couple of reminders. When the usher comes near your um, pew, they will back up behind your pew, and then your whole pew can come up together and line up along the railing. You will be offered both the bread and the wine, which you can choose to either partake of or abstain from. If you choose to abstain, um, for spiritual reasons or for health reasons, we invite you to consider how you can reverently acknowledge the gift before you, before returning back to your pew. If you prefer to have a blessing instead of receiving the sacrament, simply cross your arms over your chest, and that will signal to the priest that you desire a blessing, of which we will provide you as we come by. We ask that you keep your mask on until you are receiving the element and then return it onto your face afterwards. Our county is in red again. And we don't want to deny anyone the capacity to receive God's grace through the sacraments, but we also recognize that this is a risk for everybody, so we ask that you abide by the vestry's policy to keep your masks on. 
Um, if you have any questions or concerns or want to talk through anything, we're here for you. Your vestry is here for you. We want to talk it through. So don't harbor it. Don't keep it there. We, we want to talk about it. So um, this too shall pass. And <laughs> hopefully before we leave, I'd like to see your smiling faces in here again. <laughs> All right. Please know that at this church there is no one who is ineligible or unwelcome to celebrate Eucharist at God's table. Our altar is the table of our loving God, a table set to feed all of creation through the love of Jesus Christ. You who are a part of that creation are most welcome, indeed invited, to partake. And for those of you joining us from home today, when it comes time for communion, because you can't be here with us in person, we invite you to pray the prayer for spiritual communion, which we've included in the bulletin on page 22. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
right and good and joyful to give thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, we serve a loving God, therefore are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Prepare for us to eat the feast. Alleluia.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to eternal inheritance. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.